Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. We're going to begin reading Acts chapter 1 in a few moments. But I want to talk about the book of Acts just briefly before we start our reading today. Acts was penned by the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke. We believe that it is Dr. Luke who's referred to in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. Paul had a friend uh, who was a physician named Luke that he referred to in Colossians, and we believe this to be the same man who uh, penned the book of Acts. The book of Acts is termed the book of the Acts of the Apostles. The primary apostles that are discussed within the book are Peter and Paul. So we begin early on with a lot of stories involving Peter, and then as the book progresses, Paul becomes more of the central character of the book, and it ends with Paul on trial in Rome. And so the last book of Acts, at chapter 28, Paul is on trial in Rome. And some have put forward the, uh, the idea that perhaps both Luke's gospel and the book of Acts were written in part as a defense for Paul while he was on trial in Rome. Uh, that would explain some of the, the care given and talking to witnesses and so forth that the author refers to. But Luke, um, as a first century physician, was an educated man. Both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts are written from the perspective of a, a man well-educated in his day. If you took just the word count in these two books, Luke would be the most voluminous writer in the New Testament. People normally assume that Paul wrote the biggest portion of the New Testament because he has more letters. But in terms of just pure word count, Luke and Acts together contain more words than all of Paul's writings put together. And that, of course, is assuming you exclude the book of Hebrews, which the authorship of Hebrews is unknown. And so today we're beginning in Acts chapter 1, verse 1. In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the very same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. And he said, Brothers and sisters, the scriptures had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. 
With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all of his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Mattathias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast Lot, and the Lot fell to Mattathias. So he was added to the eleven apostles. The Gospel of Luke is written as a letter addressed to a certain individual named Theopolis, and the book of Acts begins uh, the same way, addressing the letter to Theopolis. Verse 1, In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. And so he refers back to Luke, which ends with his ascension, and Acts begins with his ascension. And uh, he's explaining to this Theopolis the procedure of his investigation and where he's starting the story. And so he, he continues speaking about Jesus. He said he's taken into heaven after the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, he had given instructions to the apostles. This was after his suffering, after he had appeared to them many different times in the course of 40 days. And so he's he's reminding Theopolis things that have already been spoken, and then he begins to speak new things in verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now I want to just take a little pause here. This book is correctly termed the Acts of the Apostles, but it could also be termed the Acts of the Holy Spirit. I don't mean that literally. We're not supposed to change the name of the text. But the the book of Acts focuses a lot of detail or a lot of emphasis on the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus here promises his disciples that they um, need to remain in Jerusalem until they are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, they had no idea what he was talking about other than they had heard the words before. And so he's reminding them, I told you that you've been baptized with water, but you're going to need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So he continues with this a little bit. And then Acts chapter 1, verse 8 is a very famous verse concerning the Holy Spirit. He says, Jesus speaking, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so these disciples that he's talking to had basically been in hiding immediately after the crucifixion. They were amazed with the resurrection of Jesus that he appeared to them a number of times. In the last chapter of John, they had been still somewhat dejected and decided to go fishing. They didn't really know what to do. But Jesus explains to them here in these early verses of Acts that the Holy Spirit is about to come on them and immerse them in himself in a way that has not happened up to this point. And after this immersion into the Holy Spirit takes place, they will be empowered to be his witnesses. He goes on to say about the witnesses, yes, you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem, which is where they were to wait, but they were also sp- supposed to go forward from Jerusalem into all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Now, this is, a once again, a commissioning by Jesus, but it's a conditional commissioning, that they have to wait until they're baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not a message on the person and work of the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
In other words, I'm not putting forward a particular doctrinal position. But we're a Spirit-filled church. We believe in a second work of grace that we refer to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I, I would contend that anyone who has been empowered by God to be a witness has received this baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, for example, not Billy Graham was not considered a traditional charismatic or Pentecostal, but certainly he had received power from the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit had come on him to be a witness for Jesus all over the earth. And so the uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is more than some believe and uh, different than some believe, but at the very least, it involves empowering God's people to give testimony to the truth about Jesus. After this, he was ascended. He was taken up into, into heaven right in their sight. And then all the early apostles, they, they listened to his words and they decided to go and gather in an upper room and wait for the promise that Jesus had made. Peter in those days stood up in verse 15. It says he stood up among the believers. In other words, he was an early leader. This leadership in Jerusalem would transition later to Jesus' brother, James. But at this early stage in the book of Acts, Peter is a leader, and we'll focus on him in future chapters. Lord, just for now, we want to pray. Lord, we need the Holy Spirit, just like they did. Lord, who can deny that the Holy Spirit came to empower your followers, Lord, to be your witnesses. It's undeniable from the scriptures. And Lord, even though people argue what this baptism means and what it was all about, Lord, nobody argues the necessity of it. We pray for a baptism in your Holy Spirit, a fresh immersion for each person listening. I pray that for them and for myself, Lord. Lord, we want to go into Jerusalem, Judea, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. The entire world needs witnesses of Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we pray for that baptism of the Spirit now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.